Hello and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. So what I have here is a Hyphonics Brutus BRZ 1700.1D board that came in with no drive. It would power up but I had no drive. The low side would go uh, all the way down to the negative rail and, and just kind of hang out there. So uh, what I did is I installed some IRZ 44Ns um, in the power supply and was doing some testing with those 44Ns when I was getting some really odd reactions with this transformer. Um, and it would sometimes short out one of the transistors that was installed. So I dug into this a little further and, uh, and let me just make a note that I do not know the history of this board. I don't know what the original failure point was uh, so I'm kind of starting with, from scratch on this. So what I found was a real common problem with Hyphonics boards. Uh, the trace, so this is 12 volts. Uh, as you can see here, here's your 12 volts, here's your 12 volt trace, here's your uh, power supply capacitors, and this is 12 volts, which the center leg of these IRZ 44s here. Well, the traces on these hyphonic boards when they burn the power supply up, more times than not will burn the trace up between the center leg and the 12 volt trace. So I had one transistor that was functional out of this out of the three on this side because I noticed on my thermal camera that this one was warming up a little bit I did not have these in I uh, I had one here and I had one here and I noticed this was powering up a little strange it was hot it didn't have a very good signal so what I did is I I took it out but when I took it out and measured voltage after installing some more I noticed I didn't have 12 volts on the uh, center leg of these transistors which made me find that I had open traces going to the 12 volts so here on the camera you'll see that what I do is I run a copper jumper um, through the board, I wind it around the back side of the transistor leg, I bring it back up, and I solder it to the board here. Uh, these are real hard traces to repair. There's a lot of current that's got to pass through these. It's kind of hard to see uh, what I did here. So let me try to get you a better picture. So the goal is to bring back the integrity of the center of those transistors because uh, like I said there is a lot of current that will flow through uh, those particular traces that's why they burn out which is a just a huge downfall on these uh, Maxonics boards but it is repairable as you can see um, so I got that put back together and now the board will fire up as intended. I do get my positive and negative rails. As you can see on the scope there in the upper left hand corner, negative positive rails, about 60 volts with 12 volts input. And I do have 
some form of drive. So here's the low side drive and then here is the high side drive. Um, and there's no output transistors installed, so there's no capacitance, you know, uh, there's no capacitance that the drive card sees. Uh, I will be removing this drive card and I will be replacing the uh, 1D transistors that are installed as they run super hot. They should be replaced and uh, this card should be up and going um, with no issues. So what I'll do is I will uh, remove this drive card and we'll get this back in. I'll get some 640Ns installed in the output and we will see uh, where it goes from there. I do believe it'll work just fine. Um, it doesn't go into protection currently right now. The relay does engage. So everything's looking good. I'll uh, be right back with you when I get this card rebuilt. So I wanted to show you just real quick the drive card. It takes me about 10 minutes to pull these and uh, rebuild these cards. Um, so you'll see that. Uh, so I replace these P2Ds here and you can see that I left a little bit of extra solder at the legs and at the back of the transistors um, just to help dissipate some of that heat. This does get pretty hot right through here and the same with these uh, these 1D transistors here in the middle. Uh, it does make quite a bit of heat. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera here, but it does make this area pretty brown on the card here. So I just wanted to show you uh, what I do when I rebuild these. I had a high side and low side drive, so I didn't replace the ICs, but I did replace these just because these are uh, notorious for heat stress. So I just want to give you a little update on this card. I got it rebuilt and I will get it back in the board here in just a minute. All right. Welcome back. I've got the drive card reinstalled. I've got both banks of 640Ns installed. Um, this amplifier does not need a signal uh, to generate the low side and high side drives. So we should be good to fire this board up. I'm going to cross my fingers, make sure it all works as intended. Just checking to make sure I have 12 volts on the back of my power supply transistors on all the transistors. Because as I had mentioned before, I did have broken traces on this one bank here, which it does look like I've got my 12 volts. So I'm just gonna pulse just slowly the foot pedal of the power supply just to build the rail voltage up and I'm just going to check the transistors make sure nothing is jumping to ground there we go looks like I've got myself some drive alright so looks like I'm probably good to hold the drive I don't feel any abnormal heating so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get both channels of the oscilloscope set up so that we can see together the high side and the low side drive. Let me get all the traces set up to center here. All right. So we're going to have channel one on our low side drive and channel two on our high side drive or rail to rail if you prefer to say it that way and as you can see on the board we do have drive we have low side we have rail to rail drive 
and the relay engages, I have a green light and it does not go into protect. So what I'll do now is I will hook up a 50 hertz signal into the input of the amplifier. And we will check with channel three the output of the amplifier. So hopefully here we'll see a 50 hertz signal for the output. And what do we have? Oh, it's going to be hard. Let me adjust the time base here to where we can see that 50 hertz signal. And there it is, the 50 hertz signal. So, as you can see, this amplifier is up and running. So again, what I did is I repaired the traces on the power supply side, which provided the 15 volts uh, control voltage. I replaced the power supply transistors with the IRBZ 44 ends. I put in 12 640N transistors on the output. I rebuilt the drive card with P2D transistors and the 1D transistors and got a 50 hertz signal introduced and I have a 50 hertz signal on the output and all looks good and clean. And again, I do thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy repair content and please check out my new website ownsburgamplifier.com for any available amplifiers. I will see you on the next one.